Welcome back to You Know. There are numerous fascinating locations on our planet where one could engage in peculiar experiments. For instance, one might contemplate frying pancakes amid the scorching dunes of the Sahara, engaging in a spirited basketball match atop the towering heights of Mount Everest, flying a kite within the icy expanse of Antarctica, or even releasing a steel ball into the depths of the Mariana Trench. It is rumored that certain students are assigned this task, yet I found the concept exceptionally captivating. Thus, I resolved to undertake my own scientific inquiry, primarily on a theoretical basis. However, it's essential to acknowledge the complexities of executing such experiments, especially when considering the Mariana Trench. Discharging steel balls into its depths is environmentally unwise, and I would strongly discourage such actions. To address this typical predicament, a framework of conditions must be established. Let us commence with an examination of the trench itself. The Mariana Trench, situated within the Pacific Ocean, is Earth's most profound oceanic trench known to humanity. Its distinct crescent shape, marked by the Mariana Islands and resembling a vast watery lunar curve, can be effortlessly identified in satellite imagery, even without assistance from search engines. Notably, the trench's deepest point bears the name Challenger Deep, a staggering depth of approximately 10,994 meters, or 36,069 feet below sea level, with a slight variance. This depth was initially documented by the crew of the HMS Challenger sailing vessel in 1875, though their measurement attempts were hindered by the limitations of contemporary technology. Seventy-six years later, another vessel named Challenger arrived at this location, utilizing advanced tools like echo sounders to accurately measure the trench's depth. This marked the christening of Challenger Deep and confirmed it as the planet's deepest abyss. One must comprehend that the pressure in Challenger Deep is over a thousand times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level, approximately 108.6 megapascals. This colossal pressure shift is accompanied by changes in water density, rendering it about 5% denser and notably colder, maintaining temperatures between 1 to 4 degrees Celsius, 34 to 39 Fahrenheit. By way of comparison, the water near Guam shores ranges from 27 to 29 degrees Celsius, 80 to 84 Fahrenheit, indicating the substantial contrast in thermal conditions. However, sunlight cannot penetrate the trench's depths, accounting for the drastic temperature fluctuation. How do these factors interact with a steel ball? The role of temperature is negligible, temperatures within the trench range present no hindrance to steel. Conversely, Pressure is a key player, tremendous pressure can distort and disintegrate materials. However, steel's resilience is remarkable. For steel to alter its form under these conditions, it would necessitate roughly twice the pressure exerted by the trench, making it imperative to position the steel ball significantly deeper, such as within the Earth's mantle or to launch them into extraterrestrial realms. Yet even with this formidable pressure, the steel ball would experience only a minute volume reduction almost imperceptible to the human eye. One might contemplate the movement of such steel balls within the trench. Contrary to initial assumptions, a steel ball introduced into water does not experience a gradual, unhurried descent. Instead, it swiftly attains its terminal velocity, the point where gravitational pull equals the medium's resistance force. This intricate interplay of forces is further complicated by various factors. In conclusion, delving into these unique circumstances provides a profound understanding of the interplay between pressure, density, and material properties within the depths of the Mariana Trench. This exploration of scientific intricacies enriches our comprehension of our planet's remarkable phenomena. I performed several calculations, but I'll spare you the intricate formulas. The steel ball's maximum velocity would reach around 15 meters or 49 feet per second roughly equivalent to the speed of a car maneuvering through city streets. This velocity is substantial, especially for aquatic life that might inadvertently encounter the ball's path. However, let's assume such encounters are unlikely, ensuring no harm befalls any creature. Consequently, the steel ball would descend to the Mariana Trench depths in approximately 12 minutes, impacting the seabed. Upon reaching the bottom, it's plausible that the ball might embed itself in the sediment potentially forming a minor depression resembling a small funnel, a noteworthy occurrence within the Mariana Trench in recent times. Now let's contemplate an alternate scenario, replacing the steel ball with a more commonplace item, 
say a bowling ball. However, not just any bowling ball would suffice. To enhance the spectacle, let's consider a larger, more impressive object, a 7kg or 15 pounds bowling ball with an estimated descent rate of approximately 1.3 meters, or 4.2 feet per second. This sizable ball would take approximately 2 hours and 20 minutes to reach the trench's bottom. This duration is ample time to enjoy a movie before the climactic finish, perfectly timed with the closing credits. Similarly, a 5kg or 13 pound bowling ball would require approximately 4.5 hours to descend. Though heavier materials like iron could expedite the process, with an iron bowling ball taking only 30 minutes. Alternatively, a lead bowling ball would descend in 23 minutes, and a pure gold ball would plummet in a mere 17 minutes. Imagining dropping a golden bowling ball into the ocean for the sake of scientific curiosity is indeed intriguing. This raises the question, what fate awaits the initial steel ball after it has rested at the trench's bottom for an extended period? Whether after a week, a month, or a year, the steel ball will remain within the Mariana Trench for a substantial duration. Unlike in shallower waters, traditional rusting processes don't unfold at these depths. However, bacteria residing at the trench's bottom have a pangshang for metals, engaging in oxidation. These microorganisms, akin to those eroding the titanic wreckage at a depth of approximately 3.8 kilometers or 2.3 miles, have a negligible concern for death disparities. Consequently, these bacteria could engage in a protracted feast with our steel ball, leading to its eventual decomposition and amalgamation with water and silt. In contrast, synthetic materials such as plastic bowling balls necessitate a distinct approach to safeguard the environment. Any synthetic object left within the trench depths must be eventually retrieved. Should you be inspired to replicate my experiment in reality, please remember the importance of responsible cleanup. If you found this presentation intriguing, a thumbs up is appreciated. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to enable notifications to stay informed about forthcoming captivating videos that await your viewing.